Summary of What Money Can't Buy by Michael J. Sandel Are there certain things that money shouldn't be able to buy? This thought-provoking question lies at the heart of What Money Can't Buy by Michael J. Sandel. It is about time we answered it, especially because we live in a society where you can legally sell your kidney, purchase better grades, and even hire someone to wait in line for you. In this video, we will explore the key arguments and ideas presented in Michael J. Sandel's What Money Can't Buy, The Moral Limits of Markets. You will learn exactly what market values are, the main arguments for them, and how free market economies rose to prominence. And how does the market society contribute to degrading virtues and moral sentiments? What are the moral limits of markets, and should there be areas where money cannot buy? Let's find out. First off, what are market values? Sandal defines market values as the principles and beliefs governing how markets operate. According to him, market values prioritize individual self-interest over the common good and allow anything to be bought and sold as long as there's a willing buyer. Now that you know what market values are, let's look at the main arguments put forward by those who support them. Hash 1. The Efficiency Argument Supporters of market values claim that free markets are the most efficient way to distribute scarce resources in society. In a free market, prices act as signals and determine what goods are produced, in what quantities, and who gets them. The forces of supply and demand drive this mechanism. When the price of a good increases, consumers demand less of it, prompting suppliers to reduce the cost and produce less. Conversely, if the price of a good decreases, consumers demand more of it, signaling suppliers to increase the price and produce more. This self-correcting cycle ensures that supply matches consumer demand. However, critics of free markets argue that the price system doesn't always work perfectly. They point out that monopolies, for example, can distort the price system by controlling the market and setting prices above competitive levels. This disrupts the rational allocation of resources since consumers have no alternatives and must accept the monopolist's prices. Another aspect of market efficiency relates to the accuracy and transparency of prices. When markets are considered inefficient, prices may not accurately reflect all available information. This can result in slightly different prices for the same goods across different markets. Speculators take advantage of these price discrepancies through a practice called arbitrage. They buy an asset in one market and sell it in another exploiting the minor differences in price and making a risk-free profit. However, these arbitrage opportunities are short-lived, often lasting only a few seconds. The actions of speculators themselves contribute to correcting these inefficiencies by equalizing prices between markets. Hash 2. The Utilitarian Argument Supporters of market values also draw upon the ethical theory of utilitarianism. Utilitarianism prioritizes maximizing overall happiness or utility for the collective and argues that any action leading to a net increase in utility is morally justifiable, even if it decreases utility for some individuals. Applied to markets, utilitarians focus on the happiness generated by transactions rather than questioning which goods and services should be up for sale. As long as the exchange creates happiness, they argue that anything can be sold. For example, individuals being paid to advertise a company's brand by wearing clothing with its logo or even getting tattoos of the same would be considered morally acceptable under this utilitarian framework. Hash 3. The Libertarian Argument Supporters of market values also make a libertarian argument, asserting that the freedom to engage in voluntary exchanges on the open market is a fundamental human right. Essentially, as long as the transaction doesn't harm others, they argue there is nothing wrong or immoral about it. This perspective aligns with libertarian and classical liberal principles. Next, let's go deeper into free market economics and how it became dominant in society. So, Sandel suggests that this shift towards market values began in the 1980s, primarily influenced by British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and U.S. President Ronald Reagan. These two leaders played a significant role in promoting neoliberalism, an ideology that advocated for lower taxes on the wealthy, privatization of state-owned enterprises, and a reduced role of the government in the economy. 
Their political success created the conditions for capitalist values to extend into areas of life that were previously separate from the market. Thatcher and Reagan implemented substantial changes in their respective countries, such as reducing inflation, lowering top marginal tax rates, and deregulating industries ranging from aviation to trucking to banking. These policies reshaped the economic landscape and established free market capitalism as the dominant economic model. As a result of these political and economic developments, our society has developed a strong belief in markets as the most effective way to distribute goods and services. Sandel points out that markets have assumed an increasingly prominent role in our lives, a trend that he finds concerning. On that note, how does Sandel critique the marketization of society? Sandel presents two key critiques of the marketization of society. First, he argues that free markets inherently create inequalities and injustices. While proponents of free markets claim that prices allocate resources fairly, Sandel challenges this notion. He states that while efficient from an economic standpoint, the price system fails to align with widely accepted moral principles. Simply because someone is willing to pay a high price for a good doesn't necessarily mean they need or value it more than someone else. This leads to a situation where those with substantial means can acquire things they don't necessarily need, while others are deprived of essential resources like food, shelter, or health care. The second critique is that free markets often restrict people's choices and force them into dangerous or unethical decisions. Sandel argues that living in a market society pressures individuals and families to earn enough money for basic necessities. While employment itself is not inherently coercive, the need to survive in a capitalist society can lead people to exploit themselves for profit out of desperation. Sandel believes that if individuals are compelled to engage in risky economic activities solely due to their dire circumstances, they cannot be truly free. Sandel's arguments align with the concept of positive and negative liberty. Negative liberty refers to freedom from external constraints where individuals can enter contracts without interference. However, Sandel emphasizes the importance of positive liberty, which involves self-mastery and control over one's destiny. He suggests that individuals facing severe economic hardships cannot exercise positive liberty and achieve their full potential due to systemic disadvantages such as poverty, discrimination, or lack of education. If you're finding value in this video, please show your support by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. As we come closer to the end, let's answer the all-important question. What is the essence of this book? Sandel's exploration of the limits of markets leads us to consider important questions about the moral boundaries of a free market society. He challenges us to engage in a collective discussion and decision-making process regarding which aspects of life should be subjected to market forces and which should be safeguarded from marketization. One of the central questions Sandel raises is whether social goods, such as education and health care, should be left to the mechanisms of the free market. He questions whether these essential aspects of human well-being should be treated as commodities, bought and sold based on supply and demand, or should they be protected and provided as rights or public goods. Similarly, he challenges the idea of placing a price on values and ideas like privacy, democracy, civic participation, and community. These aspects of life, according to Sandel, hold an intrinsic and non-monetary value that should not be diminished by reducing them to mere commodities. I hope this summary has provided you with valuable insights into the moral limits of markets and the impact of market values on our society. Now what do you have to say? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video engaging and informative, check out my other book summaries and breakdowns on similar thought-provoking topics in the screen pop-up. Thanks for watching.